Women are tired of not being approached. Where are the men? Oh, I tell myself I'd rather be alone than settle. And I'm a little worried the universe is like, okay, bet. Yeah. We can make that happen for you. Deal. Enjoy raising kids alone. Stop saying stuff like Enjoy that. Enjoy the rest of your life by yourself. <laughs> your idea. Yeah. Simply put, if a man tells me that he hates women, I know that he's dangerous. If a woman tells me that she hates men, I know it's just because she's been emotionally done wrong. Right. So no, I don't care if a woman says, I hate men. In fact, I encourage her. You should hate men. Right. Okay. But a man hates women. Okay, I have a genuine question for dudes. What's that? So, I was talking to my therapist about dating, which sucks, I think, for everyone. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And so I told her I have the you unrealistic don't. expectation that somebody's just going to walk into my life and it will make sense. Like, not that my life will make sense, but like, I'll like that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And I won't have to go through this dating mess because it's not for me. So a fair And. Time. She said in our day and age that men don't approach women, that we have made it too hard and uncomfortable for them, so they no longer approach women. Is that true? Like, I feel like I still get approached sometimes, but oh, like, <laughs> is it really just that we're forced to date? There is an inverse relationship with how you treat women and how they treat you. The better I have treated women, the worse they have treated me. When I didn't care about them, and didn't think about them often, they were obsessed with me. And when I finally was interested and tried to set my game up, the better I was towards them, the worse I got treated. The moral of the story is, don't try. Women are never satisfied. They are not designed to be content. They are designed to be unhappy. No matter what you do, they'll always look for what you don't do. And this is why the world of relationships is where it's at today, straight in the gutters. When you are young, Approaching a woman and asking for a date is profoundly intimidating because all kinds of fears pop into your head. Women usually do like going on a date because who knows what will come of it. You may find a guy you want to marry and he may want to marry you, but find out a bit about each other and then go from there. I'll tell you why he's single. He's single because his ex never valued clear communication without the use of games or using his vulnerabilities against him. Trust became an issue because he was lied to and disrespected. He was made to feel like anything that he did would never be good enough because what he did do was never appreciated. And not only was it not appreciated, it was criticized far too often. And at the time, yeah, he thought that he could change a few things to make her happy. But then he found out pretty quickly quickly that she was never going to be happy. Him giving in just became a habit because she wanted to control him rather than love him for who he was. Him prioritizing her and doing things for her time and time again became a one-way street. His peace was constantly sacrificed without any kind of reciprocation. So let's be clear, he's not single because something's wrong with him. He's single because he thought he loved and cared for a woman that didn't really love him for who he was. Put all your pride and arrogance out of your life, guys and gals, and behave like you want to see others behave towards you. Then you can enter into a mutually respectful and uplifting experience. Marriage is hard work sometimes, so don't think it is this endless bliss because you are burning rocket fuel at a rapid rate for a fair while. That will disappear, and then you are left with who that person is at their core. So, use your brain. This is sometimes wasted advice, and I've been there too. Honestly, it's common sense. If you tell someone something enough times eventually, they'll get it and just move on. That's kind of why guys are just abandoning the dating world. You either self-isolate because you feel that society wants you dead, or you're just content with your life and the things that you do have. The point is, you realize that you have to accept that you made a bad decision. But women in this day and age don't want to accept the fact that they wasted something, and they have to accept that again. Logically, you really should have seen this coming. Everything that isn't swiping right on a dating app nowadays is considered creepy. Don't approach mm -hmm. women at the bar. Don't approach women at the gym. Don't approach yep. women at coffee shops. Don't approach women at work. Don't approach women at the mall. Don't approach women. We live in HR world. That's so true. And a lot of the women who say they're not interested in being approached are totally interested in being approached if it's the right person. So they'll put out this facade of like, oh, I don't even want male attention. Don't walk up to me. It's rude. It's creepy. When in reality, they do enjoy the attention. They're just waiting to receive that attention from the right guy. Some 
some of the most like ultra feminists who say they hate when men look at them, they don't want to be objectified, they do feed off of male attention and they feed off of rejecting men who they're not interested in. They love to reject a man just to know that they are found attractive by somebody. And deep down, a lot of women feel that way, even though they're not willing to say it out loud. We often see women online posting about creepy men or just declaring a distaste for men in general. But specifically, here I want to talk about approaching them. I think there has been a natural response from men that's resulted in fewer men approaching women in person and interacting in other ways. In today's society, if a man goes up to a woman and asks her for her number or Snapchat, he's looked at as like a creep and a pervert. But if a woman goes up to a man, it's 100% okay, which is not okay to me. How likely are men to have with a lonely woman out of pity? I guess it depends on who you ask. I'd say pretty, pretty likely. How likely are women to have with lonely men out of pity. Oh, unlikely. They just want men that are rich and famous. A content creator recently polled their channel and found out that out of around 35,000 people, more than 50% of men answered were hesitant or even refused to say that they were comfortable approaching women because they thought they'd be thought of as creepy guys stalking girls. In the same poll, 11% said they totally avoid women and the rest either said that approaching women doesn't bother them or that they don't approach them for other reasons. So, more than 60% of guys basically said they wouldn't approach a woman because they fear being labeled as a creep. How crazy is that? Let's examine a few of the sociological elements that have led to the decline of marriage. The male desire for marriage has never been lower, as seen in the poll, and this is probably the main reason that casual intimacy is spreading far and wide. In a casual setting, men and women don't need to promise to get married, have children, honor, obey, and cherish each other, among other absurd things you say in marriage vows. On particular websites, anyone can look for a professional woman. Intimacy is the primary trait that men actually seek in a partner. Everything else is also available to them via other channels. Can they demand money from a woman? No, since the male always needs to be the one to take care of things in a relationship. Guys still have the option to look for male friendship. Are they able to look for a friend? I believe they can find that in both persons and dogs. Therefore, truthfully and without offense, what men desire from women is what's down under. Women are failing men. Ladies, the reason that no man is approaching you is because of you, not them. I did the dirty work and asked men why they were afraid to talk to you and got over 5,000 responses. And there was definitely a common theme. Let's read some. I would say fear of rejection and being humiliated in front of everyone. I am not worthy enough to talk to women. I just have nothing to offer them except boring, normal life. Rejection paralyzes me. Current culture feels like I will be perceived as a creep for talking to a girl I don't know. Mostly it's the fear of rejection, like I'm bothering them somehow. Rejection maybe, ending up on TikTok if you get my drift. Worried about being judged for not meeting the woman's appearance standards. So to the ladies, do better. The environment that you've created for men is only leading to the singleness that you continue to complain about. And to the men, maybe knowing that these responses were a trend amongst 5,000 of you is a bit reassuring if anything. Guys are afraid women will make a scene if they're approached. So they just completely avoid it. Again, I believe this is the case since so many videos online these days include people discussing how much they detest being approached or how much they dislike guys. I believe that many individuals have lost sight of the fact that we are designed to interact with one another. So, the shocking truth is that it's women's unwarranted behavior that has led to guys not approaching women, and I think that really needs to change. Society has come down to a default instinct being changed because women have been so used to it that they started taking it for granted. Men have had enough of it. So where are those single 30 to 40 year old men at? Where are the men that actually care about emotional connection? Like where? Where are they? Men and women were asked if they got 80% of everything they want in their ideal mate, would they be happy with that? And women said, no, that's settling. Where are the men? You can call me a simp, <laughs> whatever you want, but look at that woman. Where are the men? I'm here, but you can't. No wonder men are careful. We live in a world where there is always a chance we end up on social media as a story they will use to get attention, respect, or bolster their feminism. And the worst case, they'll shame you with a name, picture, or video, just for them to feel better about themselves. 
Fear and respect go hand in hand with all things in nature. You fear the predator in the wild enough so that you respect it enough not to approach. One misadventure in our civilized society can cause a man a complete loss of his reputation, finances, and in the worst case, freedom. Being angry at the predator is irrelevant because it is in its nature. Online dating is a vicious cycle. Men spam women so women miss good possible matches, which makes men spam more. It's a crazy cycle. Tinder has been doing this for years, and the worst part is that they never disclose how many times your profile has been shown. You could be shadow banned and your profile hidden from everyone and still buy subscriptions. Another thing is that they show your profile more often after buying the premium and show it less the longer you have it. Then they offer you a more expensive premium if you want to get it shown more often. Very predatory towards most men on there. The whole reason dating apps don't work is because they ask for your income, height, and weight. They leave very little room for conversation at that point. It's not hard to talk to women in person because there's more mystery about you and you can play the scene however you need to. Taking a broad approach. Online dating apps or search algorithms in general are very powerful tools. Tools of any kind always make the strong people stronger and the weak people weaker. If you're not benefiting from the game, don't play the game. You better take a different strategy or wait until the algorithms have self-destroyed. I think this is again consistent with the hypothesis of a generational risk aversion trend. And we know what risk they are averting. A risk that destroys men physically, financially, and emotionally. It ends up being a terrible one-sided investment of time and energy that could have been much better spent at the gym, enjoying time with friends or interests, or putting dollars in the bank. Tinder is no different than the real world when it comes to male-female interaction. The problem is on the app people always shoot for the top no matter what they look like in the mirror, so they're wasting their time going after that small percentage of getting someone who's way out of their range and ignoring the ones that are on their level. You can't be 5 or 4 sending messages to a 10 and get mad when she doesn't respond. You know that woman wouldn't respond in real life as well, you played yourself. That's why dating apps in general in this society are doomed to fail. Women aren't going to pay for attention they don't need to pay for. And if 90% of men on the apps aren't getting matches or meetups, then they are going to stop paying. So, who is paying for the apps? The point is, whether you're approaching women or not, or whether women are finding the 1% man over online dating platforms, they're only going to be competing against other women. Why? Because men have realized the juice is definitely not worth the squeeze. How times have changed. There used to be a time when men used to be in fierce competition with each other, trying to seduce one woman. Today, it's multiple women who are competing with each other, for guys including the Chads and Tyrones of our times. But the thing is, those guys don't even want to be with these women anymore. Men have standards too. We want feminine lovely homemakers. Otherwise, we don't need a woman. When women say they don't need a man that is fine, that is their choice. They can go and have meaningless relations with guys who want to have meaningless relations with them. Personally, I don't regard those men, or the women who engage in it also, as high class people. Thanks for watching Man Reacts. Show us your love and support by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. Support us and help us spread support for men around the world. Do comment and share your thoughts. We're always up for a healthy debate and discussion.